In this video, I'm going to be asking ChatGPT about uh, decentralized voting systems. And I'll probably be ranting a bit about some futurist ideas that I have along these lines of blockchain voting systems, uh, things like that. So first I asked it to uh, give me some prompts to ask itself, um, responding as a futurist and a decentralized tech expert. I don't know, I'm still playing around with this, so just trying to get uh, manufacture some prompts correctly. And then, uh, so give four prompts to speculate about the future of decentralized voting systems and their uses. And so let's see what we got here. This first one was interesting because it kind of makes it sound like it's in the past tense, as if it's from the future. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um, have evolved in the future. Describe how they have evolved in the, in the future. Um, so I can, yeah, I'll be asking these prompts kind of back into it. Um, so emerging technology such as blockchain, cryptography, distributed ledgers, you know, these are all great use cases for voting systems that, uh, you know, like it goes on to say, um, they can be, you know, utilized for different decision-making processes in organizations, especially like something like collectives or cooperatives, you know, they'll be able to use uh, decentralized voting quite easily, different communities, um, and all of this decentralized tech, it really talks about cutting out the middleman. So I see a future where um, a lot of community projects are getting done, uh, you know, within towns uh, based on kind of pooled assets such as cryptocurrencies, such as tokenized assets, and then uh, the community would vote on it being used for whatever it might be, fixing roads, schools, you know, um, whatever the community thinks is best. So I think a lot of that middleman, a lot of uh, politics will be kind of on-chain and uh, things like that. So accessibility. So let's just kind of see what some of these prompts are going with. We'll see if it pops up because I uh, my my Wi-Fi is not that great right now. Uh, let's see. So I'll go back up for now. So yeah, marginalized pop marginalized groups uh, through cryptography and through. You know, it can help with, you know, one person maybe having a wallet connected to their voting app. And because uh, these des these smart contracts and decentralized networks are just kind of sitting there waiting for a vote, then um, they'll be immediately tallied. Um, it'll be public what the voting, you know, what the votes are, what's winning, who's winning. Um, so that'll be more transparent, definitely. Uh, privacy measures, so yeah, cryptography and uh, kind of private voting, you know, that'll be, uh, I think that'll be improved in the future from decentralized tech. All right, let's see. Yeah, my Wi-Fi is kind of slow. Anyway, so robust security me measures to safeguard against cyber threats. Yeah, that'll be a challenge as these things go on, you know, cyber threats, um, voting machines these days are, uh, are definitely have the possibility of being tampered with. And, uh, you know, so decentralized networks, blockchain tech that's immutable, you know, can help with these types of things and can be fundamental for securing the voting process. Um, each vote is recorded as one transaction. And in my view, um, I think that it would make it really easy to change your vote, too, if you get new information. And maybe, uh, you know, maybe say the voting day is a couple weeks down the road, and maybe you can make as many changes as you want to your own voting ballot when you learn new things or if some scandal pops up or whatever it might be. And then it would just be, you know, that voting app would just update whatever your vote is automatically. So I see that as another use case. 
confidentiality. Yeah, you won't have to go anywhere to to like a polling station or anything like that. You can be confidential. And, uh, you know, just these uh, more integrity. Like I said, it, it will be a decentralized network that's, uh, that's secure. That end-to-end uh, -end verification. Yeah, transparent records, like I said. Decentralized voting systems. Immutable records, so there won't be a such thing as like losing votes or uh, or having human error in like looking at ballots or human error in uh, you know maybe not being clear on what what to fill out things like that or maybe people's handwriting is really bad and maybe their name can't be read or something like that. Yeah, the auditability will just be, you know, everybody will be able to see it. So it won't be like a select few that are doing the audits or doing recounts, things like that. Accessibility. So, yeah. Yeah, we could do it with mobile apps. Of course, UI interface will be very important to make it simple for everyone to be able to access and to make it uh, handicap friendly, you know what I mean? Um, yep, identity. That'll be an interesting challenge with uh, decentralized voting. Um, just making sure that it's one person per one vote. But I'm sure there's many ways of going about that, maybe connecting a wallet to a voting card or a voting ID. Um, all these interesting new proofs, all these zero knowledge proofs. There's a lot of interesting new cryptography that's come out of out of uh, cryptocurrency and blockchain. So you know it'll take uh, it'll be a process of implementing all this stuff. But um, yeah, authenticating identity can be improved. And then decentralized governance. You know, we're seeing these pop up and be tested with DAOs, um, where there's uh, groups on you know decentralized autonomous organizations that are kind of guiding different blockchain networks and how they're run. That's kind of one of some of the first use cases. Let's see. Yeah, everything will be automated. So that's the big thing is removing the need for intermediaries. You know, it's a huge endeavor to run votes, to run, uh, you know, elections. So these intermediaries uh, won't be necessary. The human error, the, you know, the things like fraud and, um, you know, that that can possibly be removed. You know, manipulation, like I said, and then uh, transparent rules. So everyone will know the rules because it'll be uh, kind of part of the smart contract. So, yeah, there's a lot of it promises a lot decentralized voting systems they they promise to be a lot and i think they'll uh i think they'll definitely reduce the number and need of of various bureaucrats of uh you know taxes and the use of tax money can be more streamlined um there won't be all these bottlenecks where politicians and you know, their cronies can, like, uh, you know, use funds and, and uh, you know, just all that fraud can be, I think it can be lessened, you know, with, de with decentralized voting. And, yeah, I'll go back up, see if I can, see if there's an another interesting question. Expanded applications. Uh, let's see. 
Yeah, we'll look at uh, future challenges and ethical considerations. That's an interesting one. I guess this will probably be my last question for it. We'll see how fast it goes. That is because of my Wi-Fi, and my Wi-Fi is being kind of crazy. All right, here we go. So this one's more about um, integrity and fairness of a democratic process and challenges, ethical considerations that we need to address to ensure the effectiveness of decentralized voting. You know, it'll take a lot of debate. It'll take a lot of testing. But I think as the years roll on that these will be implemented more. And security, definitely. There's always security and vulnerabilities, especially with new technology. Malicious actors, hackers will try to exploit weaknesses to disrupt, manipulate the voting process. And yeah, if these are, you know, blockchain networks or if it's uh, one decentralized app, you know, it'll definitely be a target for state actors, for for hackers, for all kinds of different different uh, threats. You know, system resilience will keep improving on all these networks. You know, regular audits. There will be a lot of, like, uh, you know, AI audits. That's uh, that's a new big thing where programmers are using AI to audit their audit their code and audit their apps and to write their apps, frankly. Um, so all this will be, you know, all these decentralized voting systems will be will come out can potentially come out very quickly just because all these AI coding assistants are out there. Privacy kind of went over that. Um, you know it'll it'll have to be like uh, you know public keys you know instead of having people's names out there connected to their votes of course or uh, you know some type of anonymizing uh, system can be used to and then yeah that's an interesting balance between privacy and the need to audit so it'll be, yeah, that's kind of a tricky thing where you're trying to figure out how do we make sure only people that are eligible to vote vote and, you know, it's just one vote per one person. Um, so but while maintaining their privacy and being able to audit and make sure that the right people are allowed to vote, you know, so that's an interesting nuance. And yeah, detection of fraud, you know. So yeah, there's a lot of a lot of issues to think about and to debate and to iterate on. Misinformation. So yeah, maybe having the vote just be able to be, you know, for having allowing people to keep changing their vote, you know, until the deadline uh, election date, you know, maybe misinformation can be minimized as people just learn more and more about whatever they're voting on or whoever they're voting. Um, so that might be one way to be to minimize manipulation. So yeah, these are all interesting points to think about. Reliability of information in elections. Yeah, there might be biases that get introduced accidentally uh, based on decision making. So that'll be up to the people programming these to uh, try to keep biases out of there. I know uh, different uh, AI systems and chatbots are uh, showing some biases just kind of based on the data that they're trained or, uh, you know, various biases. So I know that's a different thing. That's AI, but, you know, it's another issue to think about. Rigorous testing, yep, will definitely be needed. A multifaceted approach.
All right, it's kind of just reiterating uh, stuff we've kind of gone over. But I just thought it was an interesting topic to run through ChatGPT. Um, and it's something that could come about pretty quickly, you know, with all this stuff of, uh, you know, AI coding bots and, uh, you know, rapid advances. There's a lot of sec secure uh, blockchains that have been around a while, you know, and uh, have really low fees uh, for transactions and things like that. So, yeah, I kind of see the the base uh, infrastructure is kind of there. Um, and, you know, there's there's already decentralized voting apps out there, but I just think it'll be uh, implemented more and more for broader and broader decisions as the technology becomes more trusted, as people, you know, kind of adopt cryptocurrency more and more. You know, that'll play into it if we can have more of our wealth in crypto than as a as a population then we'll be able to like lock that up into certain projects instead of you know as a way of taxes being used to uh, improve society um so yeah these are just different routes that i'm thinking about um yeah so let me know what you think in the comments uh i'm, I'm writing up a kind of a futurist little uh article blog post too so i'll link that below this video should be done around the end of june of 23 and uh yeah so i hope this gives you some food for thought uh share my video around give it a like give give a subscribe and uh i'll keep running through some cryptocurrency and futurist kind of ideas and see what chat gpt comes up with and i'll do some more ranting about it all right everybody take care